Hey there, just a quick video here, uh, this time just calculating some basic uh, statistical quantities, mean, standard deviation. We'll, we'll calculate the uh, skewness and kurtosis of a distribution as well. What we'll be doing is pulling in uh, stock market data, specifically uh, S&P 500 data. We'll calculate uh, percent change and then look at, um, look at, the, look at the statistics of that. Um, in terms of trading, I don't know if this is particularly useful for the uh, everyday at home trader. Um, to quote uh, Tony Batista of Tasty Trade, I think this is something that's nice to know, but something not something that you really need to know. So I'm just going to go into the basics of actually calculating these things. It's very simple. There's predefined functions that do that, and I will save the analysis for a future video. So uh, with that said, let's let's get to it. So something very simple today, I'm just going to calculate the st statistics on some uh, stock market data, specifically the SPX, the S&P 500 index. So our basic imports here, uh, we're going to need Num NumPy and Pandas and Matplotlib. I think I'm going to keep this very simple today and basically just have this be stuff you could easily Google how to calculate mean, standard deviation, skewness, kurtosis. And in a subsequent video, I think I'll go down, uh, go into it uh, in more detail, especially the, the skewness and kurtosis part of that. And I'm going to try to keep my language as consistent as possible uh, with the use of the word skewness. Uh, skew comes up a lot of times in market uh, types of analysis. It can mean different things in different contexts, such as volatility skew, which we might go into in a future video. But uh, for the time being, I'm going to try to say skewness. And that's specifically going to uh, relate to the, the statistical quantity. So let's pull in our pandas data frame and we'll just chop it so that it's 1990 to present. My typos have already begun, haven't they? Um, so let's go SPX. Dot, let's call this column PCT for percent change. And that will be equal to um, SPX. Let's take the uh, closing value since they should be the same as the adjusting close and do uh, a PCT on there. Does that work? Evidently not. And I think this function is actually PCT underscore change. PD not defined. Did I not run this cell? Guess not. Okay, uh, there we go. We have our percent change column here, and now let's actually do a histogram of that down here. And I will use matplotlib rather than the built-in pandas library just because I prefer it. And I feel I have a little more control over it without jumping through tons of hoops. So the histogram function in matplotlib returns a couple of things. Um, the first uh, variable here, n, is the number of samples that appear in each each of the bins bins is going to be the the position the edges of the bins that are produced in the histogram and it also has a variable called patches which allows you to access the individual rectangles uh, if you want to do some customization work so uh, plt.hist our variable uh, pct let us actually break let's go up here first and break that out of this numpy array, uh, break it out of the pandas uh, data frame as a numpy array. So PCT is equal to SPX PCT, and we want to go to numpy. That's good. So we should now have a variable that we could use called PCT. Let's set the number of bins equal to 100, and let's see if that runs. It does not, of course. What's going on? It looks like I typed bin instead of bins here. Bins. Here we go. Uh, I don't like the fact that it doesn't distinguish between individual bins. And we can get around that by just going back here and saying edge color is equal to black. So that's a little clearer, especially uh, if there are fewer bins. Let's just do 50 for the time being. So yeah, nice little histogram here. Um, this is not a probability density at this point, it's just a, a histogram. And you can make it effectively a probability density by setting a variable called, uh, strangely enough, density, density to true. 
So what that does is it divides basically through by the uh, the area under the, the histogram itself. Uh, that doesn't, does that look right? I guess it's fine. Um, let us start with the statistics by taking the mean and standard deviation of this set of data. And what we will do is we will plot, uh, we will use that to define a normal distribution. We will plot that, that normal distribution here and see what happens if we overlay the, that, that with this plot here. So where do I want to do that? Um, I think I'm going to get rid of this print statement up here. And I'm going to come down here, just add in some blank spaces here, and I'm going to create a variable called mu, which will be our mean. And that will be equal to, uh, we want our, we want the mean of this percent changes column. So SPX dot, uh, not dot, uh, we want uh, in brackets PCT, and we want to call the mean function on that. Let's print it out too. So let's go down here, print mu. Excellent. And let's just do the same thing for the standard deviation. We'll just copy that, paste it in here. We'll call the variable sigma. And instead of mean, it's just std. And we will also do a print sigma. There we go. Uh, we're now in, uh, we're now ready to to actually plot out what the normal distribution looks like, looks like, looks like, and overlay it onto this histogram. So let's do that now. So let's uh, go from point one to uh, minus point one to to point one. So where do we want to put this? Uh, let's insert it here before. Uh, we'll do it after here. So x is equal to np dot lin space minus 0.1 to 0.1 and we'll do I don't know let's just do 100 points and we'll create a y values um, that'll be equal to let's just call it y and that's equal to norm PDF and I think we have to import this uh, we haven't done that yet so that's equal to x mu and sigma so let's go up here and as part of our imports, we'll just do um, from scipy.stats.norm import norm PDF. And did I, I did spell something wrong? Uh, what happens if I just do this? Import, I cannot type today. Import norm. And again, I forgot the P. Scipy.stats. There it goes. And now let's just change this down here to norm. Dot PDF. And then, I mean, uh, norm dot norm. Ugh. Oh God, what's wrong? Oh, you know what I'm doing? This is a, um, this is the MATLAB command, norm PDF. There we go, that looks good. Now let's actually just plot that. So let's go down here and go plt.plot, x comma y, and let's make that a black line. And there we go. Let's just change the limits on the x-axis uh, to be a little bit narrower. So let's go to, down here and go plt.xlim. And we'll go from minus 0 0.05 to 0 0.05. How does that look? There we go. Um, good. Let's go back up here and bump up the number of bins to 100 again. Okay, so what can we say about this, distribu this distribution here? Well, the most obvious thing is it's not as, how do I want to say it? It's not as broad, or it's not as wide as a normal distribution, and it's peakier, meaning most of the uh, entries are kind of within what you would expect from a normal distribution. 
Now the statistical quantity of interest here would be the kurtosis, which is just which is going to tell us just that. How peaky is this distribution? Is it is it uh, uh, as this one is kind of a, a narrow peaky thing, or is it kind of a shorter squatty type of thing? So let's go down here, and we will look at SPX. Let's just print SPX PCT, and uh, we will call the function kurtosis. And there's our answer. Well, actually, there's something a little more subtle here. Uh, the kurtosis of a normal distribution is typical is three. If we go over here, I looked at the Wikipedia article, and let's search for normal. Normal distribution is equal to three. Uh, however, it's often common to subtract three off of that kurtosis. So the kurtosis kurtosis of a normal distribution would then, in fact, be equal to zero. So that apparently is what uh, Pandas is doing here. So if we were to actually go to MATLAB, and I've exported those uh, data. So these are our percent change data. And if I were to take, take the kurtosis, kurtosis SPX, it is 11 point nine something as opposed to what is it, eight point nine something? And the and the fact is, uh, MATLAB is taking the kind of textbook definition of kurtosis, and NumPy or Pandas is taking the subtract off three. So if I subtract off three from here, we get the exact same, essentially the same answer as here. The other subtlety and why we're not getting the exact same answer is the fact that I believe Pandas by default uh, normalizes it differently to account for different different types of biases. Um, in the data, so you can explicitly tell it not to do not to do that, and you'll get, should get the same thing. Um, there is another potential issue here um, if we were not to use pandas, but actually use the scipy function. So uh, let's go up here and from scipy.stats, let's also pull in the kurtosis function. Kurtosis run that everything else is the same actually I like to have grid lines in here so let's just do plt dot grid true there we go um, I don't know why I just prefer the look of that so let's come down here now and do a kurtosis kurtosis of the variable PCT and let's print that out print Kurtosis is not defined. Kurtosis. Not a number. And the reason for that is, let's print out the first five elements of PCT. Now I'm used to MATLAB again. Uh, zero through five. It can't handle this, not a number, and that's a weird quirk of uh, the scipy and numpy functions. Sometimes they can handle a not a number, sometimes they cannot. Sometimes they, there's a flag to a set that will cause it to ignore them. Sometimes there's a different function altogether. Um, but what we could do here, if we actually wanted this, let's get rid of this print, is just delete that offending uh, first uh, first uh, first element that's not a number. So let's do mp dot delete. PCT, uh, and we want to delete the zeroth element. That looks okay. And there we go. So we get a 9.0 again, or 8.90 8 again. And you notice these two numbers are subtly different. Again, that's that normalization issue. But this number should be the same as the MATLAB number. So let's see, the fourth decimal place here, and we have a 0 0.67. So let's go to the MATLAB. 067. Let's do a format long in MATLAB and redo the kurtosis. 0672. 0672. So they're, they're identical. So um, using the NumPy or, or the SciPy pandas uh, definition, this is greater than zero. So this is a positive kurtosis and it's what's known as a leptokurtic distribution, which just means it's peakier than, um, than a normal. 
Oh uh, yeah, pretty basic here. It's just these functions are just built into SciPy and Pandas, and um, they're pretty straightforward. Again, as I said in the beginning, you can just Google how to how to calculate these things. If you want to go into detail uh, on to what these quantities mean uh, in a future video, just let me know, and, and we could definitely definitely do that. So until next time, see ya.